Hello, my name is Adrian with Applied CAX, and today we're going to be talking about modeling with tetrahedral elements in FEMAP and NXNASTRAN. Quick outline. Um, we're going to jump straight into meshing with this one. We've got a nice little shortcut there. We're going to talk about element quality, how to view that in the message window, setting your mesh sizing and adjusting it locally, using the meshing toolbox to combine curves to get rid of problem areas, and then finally do multi-solid sizing, where we can use multiple chunks of geometry to create one part. I've got this drill bit geometry here, and like I said, we're going to jump straight to meshing. So I'm not going to create materials or properties. I'm just going to right-click on the part and say Tet Mesh. You can see it automatically puts a mesh size on here. You can see the dots. It prompts me to create a material. And when I click OK, it automatically creates a property for me. There we go. We have a tet mesh. I'm going to turn off the surfaces here and do a little visual inspection of my elements. Now right away, I notice this area here with a bunch of tiny elements. And that's because there's a very short little curve there. I'm going to use the meshing toolbox to clean this up. So I click meshing and I want combined curves. So I do add by point, and then I click this button to turn on the meshing toolbox. Now if I click this point here, it adds that short curve to its neighbor, combines them, and remeshes. Let's do the other side. And then I'm going to adjust the mesh sizing locally with the meshing toolbox as well. So I come to mesh sizing, and I want to reduce this. Right now there's four elements. I'm going to set it to two elements. And again, the same for the other side. Now, with every click, the part is remeshing. And if you notice the message window here, it gives me some information on what's going on with these elements. It gives me a nice breakdown of my element quality. Uh, aspect ratio and Jacobian and the key is you want to keep both of these as low as possible so you can see I have six elements with Jacobian between 0.8 and 0.9 ideally I might try to get rid of those but we'll talk about that a bit more in another workshop alright so this is my single solid sizing now if I wanted to refine the mesh locally in this area it would take a lot of clicking on curves and individual sizing and that's not really the most efficient way to do it so I'm going to close this we'll start over and I'll show you the multi solid sizing first thing I want to do is slice my solid into multiple parts geometry solid slice. I'm going to slice this. I want to use the global XY plane and I'm just going to bump it over a quarter inch from this point. And then I'll do the same previous command and I'll bump it over a quarter inch from this point. So back to the model info tree, you can see that I now have three individual geometric solids. And I like to use the highlighter to figure out which one I'm working with. I'm going to do these one by one, setting my mesh size. And you can tell that it detects a different mesh size for each of these solids. And as I work through these, it puts the mesh sizing on the curves. Now, each of these has their own individual mesh size. I want to come back, select all three, say mesh size, and I'm going to turn off replace mesh size on all curves. What I'm focused on is uh, multi-solid sizing, where it's going to match together these adjacent solids. When I click OK here, I get these translucent and these opaque surfaces. The opaque surfaces let me know that they've matched. And when I go to actually tet mesh, we can see that the mesh matches up at those intersections. 
So if I were to check for coincident nodes, we'll do a quick preview. And you can see that all of those nodes on those adjacent faces are matching up. So once we merge them, we now have one continuous part through multiple pieces of geometry. Let's turn off our geometry and zoom out a bit. This is the best of both worlds. We have high mesh density in our area of concern, but we grade the mesh and it's much more coarse away from that area, keeping our overall node count down. All right, um, thanks for your time. As always, we've got more resources, more technical seminars, more tutorials on our website, so please check that out. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us, and we'd be happy to help you. Thank you very much.